Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Sexton 1, it's a tier 3 British premium SPG located on the eastbourne of Sand River under the command of Admiral Zombie. Okay, game started. Now, this is one of only two premium SPGs in the game, tier 3, which means it doesn't see many high tiered vehicles. It's got a 25 pounder as its main armament and it's capable of doing 280 alpha and penetrating 44mm of armour with the standard HE and that goes up to 92mm at tier 3 and remember that's probably a lot more than most of the heavy armour it's likely to come up against with the premium rounds and with the standard rounds it'll do 71mm so it's still very good even with standard ammo. The premium rounds, um, the armor piercing rounds they're very good because if you actually hit the target you have to hit the target to do it but if you do hit the target it sometimes puts it out of the game completely <coughs> excuse me well he started the game by actually aiming at the lookout nest right up on top of the hill overlooking the enemy cap area there's normally somebody up there looking down the valley towards our guys but because this is tier 3 there's a lot of fast moving tanks in the game and that T116 has actually sneaked in pretty quickly and he's having to lead the target with his shot it's got a quick reload it's only 9.7 seconds and the guy's tracked so this shot will hit and it does but he doesn't get the kill the kill actually goes to the T82 HMC instead now, just above the enemy cap on the cliff side, overlooking the river bed, there is uh, an enemy tank there, a Panzer 38T, hiding in the bushes. Over on the other side, the north bank, we've got a Panzer 3. It's a Panzer 3J, actually. Okay, Admiral Zombie's not having a lot of luck so far, but more targets coming into sight, so. He should be able to get some more hits and do some damage. He's dialing in on the Chi Ha. Fires. It wasn't fully dialed in when he fired, but okay, lots of fast moving targets now. And they all seem to be converging on that strip M40L. And yes, he did die. But they've all stopped by the wreck, and yeah, that one landed right alongside the Panzer 3J, but didn't do any damage at all. In fact, I don't think there's much in the way of splash. Yes, it's only 1 meter 39, so you have to get the, the round very close, possibly right at the track level, to do some damage to these guys. He fires a quick snapshot in. Oh, that one, because he was coming towards us, actually did hit the target quite squarely in the face. And he's got his first damage for 115, but he's lost sight of the enemy, and they're getting closer and closer to him. Yeah, he's gone to overhead mode now. Oh, Panzer 3J stopped momentarily. Good hit. 257 right in the face and that one did pen him. Okay, he's gone back to this P2640. Actually, it's a slightly more dangerous tank because it's a tier 4. And this is a tier 4 game. So he's top tier. He's dialing in. Almost ready to shoot. Right in the face for 109. It's a non-penetrating shot, but it must have done some damage. It did track him, and he used his repair kit. But the enemy is getting so close now, they are in visual sight. Uh, this is where you might have to shotgun the enemy. He's taken a shot already from the enemy. Fires one in. Hits the BT-5 and tracks him. And I think he's burnt his repair kit, but he's still firing at Admiral Zombie. But Admiral Zombie's going to finish him off. Yeah, easy. He did take some damage though, he took four shots from the enemy there. He's lost most of his hit points, at least two thirds. And usually that means he's going to get a medal if he can kill two enemies. He's got one already. If he can kill another one, then he's almost certain to get a, a Starks medal. Say almost certain, not guaranteed. I thought that uh, I'd earned a Starks medal once and uh, was absolutely certain when I came out of the battle I'd got all the conditions, the two kills, the lost two thirds of the hit points, received two shots from the enemy and it turned out in the end that uh, no, for some reason I didn't have two thirds of my hit points lost or two thirds of um, 
the hit points in block damage. And that's a nice long range shot there on the T 10 TP. He's um, been penetrated by that one because um, 299 hit points, that's a high roll penetrating shot. Remember, the penetrating value for these HE rounds is 280. So to get 299, you must have got it right inside him. T40 now, sitting above the cap area. That's a nasty tank destroy. He fires the round in. Will it land on him? It does! Amazing! Such a long range. This is from one end of the battlefield to the other, and he's firing, and he's still getting hits. Oh, narrowly missed the T40 there. He pulled forward just the right moment. And we're now in the end stages. There's only four enemies left. And yes, there is a 10 TP sitting in the bush where he first fired at the start of the game. Now, hopefully, if he fully dials in, he's ready now. Will that shot land? No, it went where the 10 TP was, but not where he is. And there's that 40 TP. He's firing between the rocks there. Oh my god, he got him! What an incredible shot from one end of the battlefield to the other. He slots the shot between two rocks and kills the T-40. He's now trying to end that 10 TP, but there's a keyhole north of the riverbank. It's five versus four now, with both parties working hard at this end. So basically, numbers are even at the other end. There's just as many attackers as there are defenders, but the... RT approving, we're worth it because that's a direct hit on the 38T. It's tracked him and he's out the game. So the Kehoe's coming back. Oh, he fired ahead of his path and it was in line, but unfortunately the Kehoe's just killed Armada too. That Kehoe is now the major problem. The 10TP at the moment, not so much because he is very low on hit points. Our Matilda is all the way back at this end and hasn't moved much for the entire battle so he can't really take part in the battle and the poor m2 medium at the other end he's all on his own he did have the support of the marder but now finally the matilda is actually moving up the riverbed i think has he changed position no he's staying stationary again so the poor m2 medium is trying to fight this battle all on his own down there. And can we see what's actually happened to him? Is he actually flipped? No, he's still there. He's just hiding at the moment. He might have gone offline if he has. Oh, the Matildas are moving. The Matilda is moving. Well, it looks like Admiral Zombie needs to get his uh, uh, game together on the kids game together get his uh, sexton up the other end of the map and try and shotgun some of these enemies i know he's lost a lot of hit points but he might be needed in the cap area and there's the keyhole he's found the m2 medium yep come on need to move up the other end and he's doing it good excellent Sometimes RT just has to pull the pull the, the game pull the iron out the fire and, and actually win the game for the team by going mobile. I know a lot of people say, oh RT's going mobile. <laughs> they think, well, no chance, but actual fact some RT players are really good in shotgun mode. And they can actually pull off the impossible, the mi uh, miracle of actually fighting a game with an arty where you can't sniper aim except by going into overhead mode. The M2 medium is now chasing the Kiho. And the Matilda is moving up the river valley, but he's very, very slow. It should be noted that the, uh, the Matilda player isn't that uh, inexperienced. He is actually... Uh, He's had quite a few battles, but he just didn't take part in this one. Well, Admiral Zombie's moving up. They've only got 5 minutes 40 seconds, which is enough time for him to get to the other end. And tell you a little bit about the, uh, the Sexton 1. They stopped building them in 1943. The British had a need for um, self-propelled guns. And the bishop just had too short a range to actually be useful for a British uses. Um, 
they needed a, an, an artillery which actually had or used a British um, field gun, such as the 25 pounder. Now, the Americans had actually built the M7 Priest, and the British initially intended to build, buy the M7 Priest, but of course it was armed with a 105mm round, and that meant that they either had to buy the ammunition from the Americans, or they had to manufacture 105mm shells themselves, which would have been a big undertaking, given that you know am ammunition manufacture is standardised. You have a lot of tasks to go through to actually make a shell and um, they were geared up to manufacture as many 25 pounder shells as they could and so they needed an artillery piece with the 25 pounder gun and so what happened was that they designed an artillery piece at the uh, Montreal Locomotive Works that's where it was being built Montreal and it was based on the uh, M4 hull but with an artillery piece which is the 25 pounder it was actually quite a successful design. They built initially 125, and these were the Sexton ones. Oh, good shot right into the back of the keyhole. And that makes him on one shot. And the M2 medium's coming up. Can we get another round in? Almost. Round's out. Oh, it went long. He pulled back just in time, but the M2 mediums, I think, has got him. That keyhole's backing away. Can Admiral Zombie get a round into him? Round's out. Oh yes! Wins the game! So, before I get to <laughs> finish the story, Admiral Zombie wins the game for the team. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for Admiral Zombie in the Sexton 1. He got a Bruiser medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. He got 14 in this one. And he did get a Starks medal. I thought he was probably on uh, for a good chance of getting it in this one. Two thirds of his hit points lost. Uh, he survived the battle and he got 2 enemy kills. And, uh, well... He certainly did it in this game, and in fact, he took much more than just two shots from the enemy. He took a lot, uh, four shots in total. He did lose two-thirds of his hit points, so very well done. These are difficult to get. He also got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game with some lovely penetrating shots as well. I think there was at least two penetrating shots. In fact, I think according to this, it's saying that there was five penetrating shots, but we'll have a look in the team score um, or in detail report shortly. We can see when it came to damage, yes, he was well over the um, uh, 1,000 hit points. In fact, actually, 1,523, the highest damage in the game. P2614 managed 1,258. And the high score on the enemy team was that T40 killed with that miraculous shot. Fired between the rocks. 1,186 hit points went to that guy. He was a very dangerous customer. But Admiral Zombie managed to take him out with a beautiful shot at long range. When it came to kills, he, he shared the top spot with the T-40. Both had three kills each. Two kills for the Panzer Sebtar Laferta Fear B and the T-82 HMC, the Matilda and the P-2640. When it came to base XP, yes, he's top on that one as well. So he's got the top in all three columns. 904 base experience points. 588 went to the P-2640. 448 went to the Panzer Kampfwagen uh, Spy Ausrung J. That was a, oh, Panzer 2J. Um, troll light. <laughs> um, okay, so let's have a look at detail report. 33 shots fired, 11 direct hits, 5 penetrations, 5. That is a lot. And that most of those were with HE rounds. I think he actually ended the game with the same AP rounds that he started. I'm pretty sure it was. So it just goes to show even the HE rounds is a high, high penetrator in this game in tier 4. He got splash damage on 11 as well. Damage of 1,523 hit points, of which 1,033 were at more than 300 meters. So you can see there were some close range shots in this game as well, including, of course, that uh, uh, tank that he took on at very close range. Six hits received, four penetrations, two non-penetrations, and 94 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He damaged eight of the enemy, killed three of them, and did 89 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 29,591 credits, got 50,000 credits from personal missions payout, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, he still took away a massive profit of 66,330 credits. So that's from a tier 4 game in a tier 3 RT. That's a very high score. 
you'd be happy with that score with the tier 6 uh, M44. 904 XP, times 2 for the first victory, 814 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 3,526 experience points altogether. So to finish my story, they came up with the, um, the Sexton 1 as the first version, and they had to do some work uh, after the first 125 had been come off the production line. They changed a few things around. You get, the Texton 2 has a few boxes added on the back of the vehicle, but it's basically still the same vehicle, except, of course, instead of using the um, M4 hull, or rather the M3 version of the hull with the bolted together front, it started using the um, molded metal front of the M4, you know, the later model M4. And from 1943 to 1945, they built a lot of these Sexton 2s, uh, this, the follow-on vehicle. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's over 4,000. So that is a great many. So obviously they were having a lot of success, but it was a late war uh, vehicle. It wasn't um, uh, an early one and uh, really only saw major action in Italy and in um, the Normandy campaign um until the end of the war so it, it didn't really see any of the early action in the desert simply because it wasn't around uh, at the same time i think maybe a few of them might have been out in the desert when rommel was finally kicked out of tunisia uh, but they were definitely in italy and uh, so that was the end of my story and well, well done, Admiral Zombie. Some fantastic shooting, really. After after a slow start where he was finding it difficult to get shots on the guys because they were moving so quickly, he then started getting some really heavy hitting shots on the enemy and, of course, got that beautiful shot in the M40, their most dangerous player, and finally got a shot that finished the game off for everyone uh, by killing that Kehoe. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.